Hey guys, what's happening? It's smarthelping.com here. This is a new financial model. I know it's been a couple weeks. Um, I've really worked through this and I think it's one of the best models I've ever done. It's for a pawn shop and we're going to go out five years on the projections. And let's just get right into it. What I'll do is I'll explain each tab and we'll walk through how it works. After you view this, you should be able to understand how you would build a scenario for um, a pawn shop uh, startup business. So the first tab is just the index. This gives a high level summary of what each tab is and some definitions about things you may need help on. Our first tab, and basically how this works, you're going to the the simple summary is you change variables on all the light yellow tabs and based on what you put in those assumptions it will project a monthly and annual P&L and then that kind of flows to an executive summary which gives high level metrics and some charts some more charts and this kind of cash flow uh, enterprise valuation there's also a financing schedule so let's kind of walk through some of these assumptions and what kind of logic uh, has been built in here. So right off the top, you start with your first uh, day of the year. Um, this is the year your project starts. It's just simply a, a date entry here, and every all the drop drop downs will um, populate based on that. And then we've got exit assumptions. So here's your start, and here's your end. Now you could enter an exit in any month. Or you could do not selling and it will not account for that. And what this does is whatever month you pick, it will then stop all the cash flows and all sales and everything on that month. And it will populate a valuation based on either the revenue, a revenue multiple or an EBITDA multiple, depending on which one you want. And then you can put your multiple in here to see what the value is at the exit month. Uh, so pretty nice there, uh, and that's the nice thing about structuring the data in these monthly and annual P&Ls is you can do some nice, easy querying of that data. So we've got a valuation here, um, the year of the sale. The cash requirements is some uh, formula that's just taking the, the maximum uh, negative cash position that you are in in a monthly basis this doesn't have to be the initial startup if you have you know initial startup costs as well as you run a deficit for a given amount of months based on what what the result of your assumptions then you know this is the amount of cash you need to come up with to cover all of those costs this does include the financing uh, variables so if we say if we put in say 800,000 here for financing starting on January 1st you can see the capital requirement goes down. If we were to try to finance the whole thing, which is very unlikely, you're probably going to need some equity, at least from investors. Well, let's just put in like $3 million. You see there, still you have a, a cash requirement. Probably because of the debt services, add another zero there. Let's see what this looks like. I'll show you where, where this is pulling from the monthly summary. It's looking at this minimum. So yeah, basically that debt service at 189,000 a month is more than the cash flow from operations. So you're actually never, it, you know, it's too much debt service. So let's put this back down to say a million five hundred. Trying to find a scenario where we get to a negative amount here because it'll show you basically you don't need any cash or you never have a negative month uh, cash flow month based on all the assumptions. So I don't think we're gonna. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. All right, let's just put it back to two hundred fifty thousand for now. So there's your finance assumptions, all these finance assumptions and a date, which you could do, say you want to start financing or a loan in May. You can see the loan won't start until May and 
the cash flow comes in from that month. Also, the cash flow at the exit month is going to come out of whatever it's due on the loan. So here, saying the balance is 235 in October 2022, so that is going to reduce off of your cash flow um, positions. Put this back to January. Uh, then we've got break even. So this is just looking. There's not really. I didn't because of the way the revenue uh, logic is structured and the cost. There's not really a variable expense. There's just um, cost of goods sold and running expenses. So the break even for a year one I just did is is those total costs. Um, so you need to make 3.2 million in revenue uh, to break even based on what you've spent on your inventory and what your operational costs are. We've also got break even month and year. So this is based again on the assumptions. If you go by month, um, you're, this would have you be uh, you know covering your initial startup capital requirement, this 1.1 million uh, by month five. And that's in the first year, obviously. And you can see that's pulling from right here. And you can see we start at 1.1. And we're making profit here for uh, five months. So you can see 1.2 million in the first five months would be the break even given this scenario. Now, obviously, this is not financial advice or anything. It's just um, a tool to try to plug in various assumptions about your plan and see what the result is. It's just like a big calculator. Uh, so that's the control tab. Uh, let's move to the next flow, which would actually be our revenue assumptions. So this is the meat and potatoes here. This is how you're going to build your revenue. So pawn shop, uh, we've got some categories here. I tried to uh, make categories kind of basically low-end things, average things, and high-end, and this is based on the, the average price of things, just in general. And then we've also got some miscellaneous here that you could play with. And so how the logic works is, let's look at furniture, for example. You've got um, the start month here. So whatever month you put here, this is when you expect sales to start happening of this um, item. And then we have how much you want to sell or how much you think you can sell um, furniture for. And you've got, obviously not all furniture is gonna cost the same, so I put in three price levels here. Um, so this is like your average furniture. Um, high would be 750, mid is 250, low is 50. And I have done, I haven't done a ton of research to get to these figures, I just kind of ballparked it, what kind of made sense to me, but obviously you could change all of this stuff. Everything in light yellow, you could change to whatever makes sense for your situation. Um, so anyway, this is how much you plan to sell the items for. Then this is your target profit margin on the products. And I just put it 35%. You can put it at 50%, whatever, um, you know, again, makes sense for you. And what, based on this margin target, it's going to tell you how much you need to be buying this stuff for. So this is your cost. So if I want to make a 35% margin on furniture that I consider of high value, I need to be paying $488 on average for those items and then selling them for $750. You can see the math there if you want to see. So if you sell for $750, it costs you $488. You're making $262. And you divide that by your sale price. That should be 35%, which it is right there. So that's how that this math is working. And you can define all of these start month in the pricing and the margins for all of these different categories here. I try to put enough that it would make sense for a you know a regular pawn shop. And so as we move to the right here, we have the expected daily sales. So obviously you might not be selling everything here in multiple pieces of everything every day, but you you know so depending on your expected demand, quantity de quantity demanded for each um, pricing tier here, like you know low level furniture, mid level high, you can put in how much you expect to sell per day. Now, if I were to put in on the high here, 0.1, that means I expect expect to sell one uh, piece of furniture every 10 days, and so if, in the course of a month, that would equal three. And so the reason why I do decimals here is just because there's it's very likely that you will not be selling at least one thing per day. So that gives you some more uh, flexibility there. Um, 
and you can adjust those for each uh, price and tier. Again, low, mid, high applies. This kind of maps across. So this is all low, 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 and that all is together. Um, and then mid and a high, same thing. Uh, and the only reason why I did that is just so you have some flexibility in pricing out your categories. Uh, next up is your uh, sales growth. So you notice I don't have you manually entering by year every one of these figures. It just it wouldn't work with the, the logic and the flow and it gets too messy. So what it is, I just allowed you to apply a simple annual growth rate of so your sales. So this is going to um, actually be broken down into a monthly here. And that's the formula to convert an annual rate to monthly. And this is what you have to uh, grow something at over the course of 12 months in order to reach 2% gain. So if you want me to demonstrate that logic, I can do that. Let's say we start at 100 for month one. We grow that at 0.17% per month. After uh, 12 months, we should be at 102. And there we go. You see 102 even, no decimals there whatsoever. And that's pretty cool math there, isn't it? So you see you've got all these decimals here, and then your uh, 12th term, you've now gone one year and you've grown 2%. So that logic applies to our monthly P&L for every single item. And it's based on the start month you enter here, and 12, every, every month after that, it's going to start growing um, your monthly sales based on what you've put in here, your growth rate, which you could adjust for each one, and finally, the last piece of this is the expected working days per month. So I put 26 in here. This is just going to define your expected monthly sales after you take into account all of this. Um, so there's the revenue. That's probably the most complicated part and the most important. Um, it's going to help you plan. I mean, it could be even a budgeting or, or forecasting tool for you to, know, uh, to use to figure out you know, what you want your sales to be in order to meet certain uh, goals and this is a really bottom up way to do it and really dynamic and the reason why we have different start months is because you might be scaling things you might not want to start selling certain things until later on so this gives you a nice way to show it here and then in the, it'll it'll reflect in the high level financial summaries next we've got costs uh, nothing different here than I normally do. You've just got um, your monthly fixed costs, the months that you plan on those starting, and then what they would be every month over the course of five years. So this is saying your rent is starting in June of 18. And you see this is dropped down based on the five years of the, the model. Um, you're doing $4,500 a month for year one, $4,600 for year two, $4,700 for year uh, three per month. So the annual amount would be all of these figures times 12. If you want to figure out your annual cost, you could simply just take this whole thing here and multiply it by 12. Um, so there's the running monthly costs. We've also got startup costs. Uh, so these are your one-time costs that happen at the beginning of the business in time equals zero period, which is on a monthly period would be here before anything else. And in that, you define these, like if you have building purchase, showcases, electronics, office furniture, kiosk, signs, advertising, campaign, whatever it might be. You can enter all those there. The only complex part about this startup cost is your inventory. So here you can define the number of months you want to prepay for inventory. So if you put five in here, that's saying that it's going to look at the cost of goods sold uh for the first five months so you can see here one two three four five and you can see that is one million fifty five so it's saying the stuff you're going to plan on selling the first five months you're going to have to obviously buy that inventory so this is is kind of planning ahead and showing you how much you need to pay to get the ball rolling and that will flow right into your startup cost right here and then we actually add it back in the net cash flow right here. So you can see this inventory is, is dynamic and based on whatever month you enter on the cost assumptions, it's going to add back into the cash flow for the month. And so that doesn't get messed up. And then you're also on the EBITDA, uh, 
the EBITDA is just taking into account what the cost of goods sold are for that month, and it's not. This obviously doesn't look at any of the startup costs, so that's how those two situations work. If we change this to say seven, obviously that goes up, and you can see now this is going to actually go out for seven months, say 1.4 million. So that's fully adjustable, and um, I think it's very a uh, useful way to figure stuff out without having to do the math yourself. You just enter a five here, whatever month, however months you want to plan out for that. Uh, and then finally, you have, you've got CapEx. So this is just one-time items that happen as an expense in one month in the future. Um, and that's it. So you can see you enter your month and the amount and the description, and that's it. And that populates here. Let me get down a bit. Running monthly costs. Here's a capex. So you can see these those things happen. Just got them happening one month after the next, and that's your capex. And so we've got that. Then we've got our loan. So this is things you're going to be taking for collateral. Same categories. Um, you could change the start months here as well. But what it is is basically you, you tell. Uh, the model, the average value of loan that you're giving, the average loans you plan to do of that category per month, the average days of those loans, and then the average annual interest rate. And based on that, we're going to actually populate the interest revenue on every, uh, every uh, loan that's settled for that month. So even though, let's say, these loans, you're not going to collect the interest for 120 days, for the purpose of simplicity and just recognizing the interest revenue, the second, um, you know, this month starts, your start month uh, begins for that category, it's going to start doing your full interest uh, earned every month. So in February, it's going to do the calculation. You know, say so you do $6,000 loan, you do it f five of them, and you get paid uh, 0.03% per day. That's the daily rate. And you do it for 120 days. So it's going to calculate it to $1,000. If interest will be earned over the next 120 days, but we're recognizing it in the day in that month. And it, it'll do that for every month until uh, you your exit month or just the end of the, the five years. And th this was probably a really one of the most difficult things with the pawn shop is trying to do the inventory. And for this, just the sake of trying to model out uh, cash flows and um, a high-level summary, it was too complex to try to figure out um, inventory levels with different things being bought and sold over time and different things being in inventory over time. Um, I would have to sacrifice a whole lot of functionality to do that, and I just didn't think it was worth it. This still gives you the same idea, same picture, and accomplishes... A, a very very similar forecasting result. Uh, so that's the loans. Next, we've got the monthly P&L. So this is where everything's populated. And you can see we've got the sales count of each pricing tier that we entered on the, the revenue assumptions. You've got your low, mid, and high sales. Then you get your total sales per month. You've got the same thing, but then revenue for each one. And then you've got your interest revenue total revenue and then you start getting into the cost of goods sold of each tier and then you've got your total cost of goods sold gross profit running monthly costs EBITDA capex cash flow after capex startup costs uh, debt service financing cash in and out uh, cash flow after that exit so this is your exit um, month uh, the value of the business at exit based on the assumption we talked about earlier your cash flow after exit, which is going to be your net monthly cash in and out. And then you've got your accumulated cash position over time. So one thing that I try to do is, you can see how this is really long. So I put in some group data groups here. So you can just hit one or two up here, and, and these will expand and collapse. And that shows you just the high-level um, subtotals of each of the main categories. So it's a bit easier to visualize. Um, I'll expand it for now, though. Just so it's open. And then the annual PL, same deal as the monthly, but it's just on an annual basis. All right, so 
pretty good there. The financing. This all auto updates based on the assumptions. Now let's go to the executive summary. So this is your high level. You've got total revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit. And this is because there's just so much going on on the monthly and annual P&L details. This is kind of a better way to just see it without having to scroll. So you can see all the high level items, your margins, uh, EBITDA. You can see some return summary here, like internal rate of return, cash required, cash returned, five year ROI multiple, this kind of cash flow valuation, exit value. Uh, some other uh, sales counts, low, mid, high, in one spot. A chart for those. Let's put this back to the last day of the year. So these charts, there we, there we go. Um, then we've got revenue, gross profit, EBITDA here. So mate, your main, uh, uh, you know, are you making money? Is This is going to tell you how much you're making. Uh, this chart, I've actually never done one like exactly like this. I thought it was helpful. Is total cost of goods sold versus total running cost. So you can see in proportion how much they are relative to each other, as well as what they equal total, which would be your total expenses. Uh, a, also, the basically, that's your break even. Uh, other charts, so I did about, we got five charts here. So I did monthly accumulated cash flow, accumulated cash flow on an annual basis. Um, the sales revenue per pricing tier, sales count per pricing tier. So you could obviously see there's a lot less sales of the high level stuff, but they're still bringing in a lot of revenue. Um, the color codes are all the same for uh, low, mid, and high. So it really helps you see, um, you know, how much you're selling of each and how much you're actually making off of each uh, category. And then we finally have a startup cost breakdown. So this kind of lists all of your startup costs and then shows you how they are in proportion to each other. Um, which could be useful if you're raising capital, as they could see what you're doing with the cash quickly right there. Um, okay, so I think that's it. Uh, put some parentheses around this. So now the important part, if you actually want to, to get this model, this template, I will sell it at, on smarthelping.com. It's going to be uh, a link in the description box below that uh, links you to the page to buy it. It will be an intermediate model, so that means $75 one-time cost. Um, and then if you go ahead and purchase that, I will be sending you the model and um, you know answer any questions you've got. I also do customization at $75 per hour, um, and usually people spend between two and four hours with all kinds of different Excel and Google Sheet jobs. So that's also um, something I can do for you. Um, well, that's all I got for you. And uh, now I'm going to take a break because I'm exhausted from being in Excel for many, many, many hours at once. And have have a great uh, rest of the week. It's finally getting warm where I'm at. Hopefully, uh, I'll get you another model um, going here uh, in a couple more weeks. See you later.